right, so we got five darkest crimes that the Imperium is guilty of. Uh oh, someone's guilty. 40k is one of the darkest franchises ever made. Even if you're only vaguely familiar with the property, Facts. you know it's full of some pretty dark stuff. I mean, really dark. It's literally the franchise that coined the term grimdark, which would subsequently give rise to an entire literary genre of grimdark fiction. Now, most of the horrifying things you'll encounter in the pages of its stories are done by the menagerie of savage, grotesque, and even hedonistic alien species. Oh no. Or by the demonic forces that live just beyond the veil of our universe and are aided by their insane chaotic cults that oh, worship them. No. But in a lot of instances, the Imperium of Man itself can actually be just as brutal, if not far more grimdark, justifyingly, frankly terrifying actions under the guise of being the lesser evil. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at five of the darkest things within the Imperium. I mean, From the go. absolutely terrifying way the lobotomized servants of the Emperor known as Servitors are actually made. A merchant guild that has been tasked with possibly the most disturbing job imaginable. And an example of an Imperial hero, a woman said to be so great that her followers demand she be recognized as a saint. But in reality, she had some insanely dark methods for achieving her bloody goal. Oh, she was dirty. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. This one really doesn't surprise me. You know why? Because the same way that she had to do is like, uh, like a couple dirty things to like, you know, be recognized as great. That's such as like every other like space marine. That, 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 but that's like every other like Primark in this game. Like bro, as a Warhammer new booty, bro, I'm starting to understand that bro, there is no good guy. I mean, well, obviously, you know, the Salamanders, they're good, but excluding them, bro, there is no good guy. There is no all, you know, great Superman. There's a star, man. Like, there is no, you know, superhero in this in this game. There is no good guy in this game. Everything is just dark, and it gets dark, dark, dark until we meet people that has that that are literally as dark as the oceans deep. And I'm not talking about salamanders. You know, listen, they're black. They're black, black. That like, bro, like they're they're really black. But at the end of the day, I'm talking about like their character. Like people's character are like really dark in this game. So let's get right into it. We're gonna be talking about all that and a whole lot more. So let me know if you like content like this by dropping a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. Let's oh, go. Yeah. And let me know down in the comments if you know of any other super dark things from 40K you'd love to hear me cover. It's a pretty big universe, Everybody. and I always get the best ideas for videos from you guys. Anyways, a quick <laughs> shout out to this video's sponsor, and then we're going to dive headfirst into the Grimdark. Are uh, you covering the sponsor real quick? about these amazing t-shirts that you see me wearing All right, so why are you covering the sponsor, bro? Like I said before, bro, nothing in this game is, is, is all good, all great. Video. It's so all evil. As a Warhammer new booty, bro, I thought that, you know, that you would have, like, the good versus the evil. No, it's just evil versus the evil. Now since I um, first one thing I would say is, I mean, so like, far, listen, you will have like a bunch of like, you know, wash, legions like, and stuff like that. Times, that's just here just to like, you know, no clean up stuff. Or not even clean up stuff, but like, like they would actually come ridiculous. through and like, you know, save like some other legions and stuff like that. But I wouldn't really count that as like, you know, being a good guy because at the end of the day, I mean, they're just doing that just, you know, that like that's their job. They were actually made to do that. They weren't made to, like, they're not saving legions just because, like, you know, like the Salamanders. Like the Salamanders, bro, even though like we burn people alive and stuff like that, they're still like out there, you know, helping out the cause and helping out people so at the end of the day um, those are the real super you know super men uh, of this game are super comfortable, let's get right back to video resistant to shrinkage and fading and are shockingly really affordable as my listeners can click on the link in the description we got the west hammer video. tees okay go into the am.com slash west hammer to get a bundle of three t-shirts for only 60 oh that's a steal it's even crazier than that because by using my link you can get an additional 10 percent off your entire order I Again, was actually thinking about making merch and stuff like that. Should I actually do that? So click on I, I was, I was trying to do that like once I reach like 10k. Awesome for yourself today. You can thank me later. Big thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. All right, here we go. If you're not familiar with Servitors, they're easily one of the darkest things in all of Warhammer. Servitors. Now, I'm going to give a brief rundown in this segment of what they are for people who are new to the franchise. But the real takeaway here is not what they are. It's how they're made. And I got to tell you, it's pretty disturbing. A servitor is a fusion of human flesh and sanctified metal. Now, often these mindless creatures are created from harvested corpses or vat-grown bodies, but more commonly are made from mind-wiped human criminals that have angered or offended the Adeptus Mechanicus in some way. These people will end up being lobotomized, having their minds wiped and reprogrammed, and then cybernetically enhanced. From the Mechanicum's perspective, these people have been improved, and even criminals and heretics are given another chance to serve the Omniscient. No! What do you mean given another? No, 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 no. They, they trying to manipulate. What do you mean given another chance? So you telling me that, like, like people that were, like, criminals and bad guys or whatever, 
like they're dead so basically wait no 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 bro they combine them with like with like oh lord jesus christ i can't even imagine wow i bro i bro i mean i just imagined some dark stuff for the first time in a long time wowzers bro they they put these criminals with like biotech Oh my good, bro! He don't even got a mouth. How is he supposed to eat his cheese crackers? Oh, These no. cyborg creations can be found throughout the entirety of the Imperium and are used to perform any number of different monotonous or dangerous functions. They are completely obedient and have no regard for their own safety, willing to follow orders to the letter no matter what they may be. Most are not capable of speech unless this is part of their reprogramming done after the lobotomy, and it's only done when it's deemed absolutely necessary for whatever their specific role will end up being. To run an empire as large as the Imperium, artificial intelligence is basically a necessity. Look at this, bro, look at him. I'm sorry for pausing it, y'all, but look, bro, this does not look safe. Bro, if this was coming to save me, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't wanna be saved. Look at this thing right here, bro. Oh, oh man, oh my goodness gracious, this is nasty looking, bro. But due to the fear and hatred of thinking machines prevalent throughout human society, the servitors are the closest the Imperium is willing to get to a functioning AI without committing tech heresy. It's a convenient workaround, considering that a human brain is still being used in combination with all of the different systems that make a servitor work. Man, that brain overworking, bro. Being just a machine that can actually think for itself. Servitors come in an endless variety of different types, oh, from goodness. disturbing works of art that are created to serve the desires oh. of the rich and powerful. This making me itch. misshapen labor units created to work in the most dangerous of industrial zones. Ooh. To even mindless combat drones equipped with all manner of heavy weaponry. Most of the servitors you'll see are made just to perform mundane tasks, such as routine maintenance, loading freight, sorting through endless dockets, or acting as a guard for a particular area. Now, this is where they get kind of dark, but I have to preface this with it's insanely rare. But there have been a few notable examples of servitors who have maintained some form of diminished sentience. Whether that be them suddenly regaining consciousness and awakening to the horror that is their existence. Or, in other cases, being fully conscious after the process that was made to create them. It but, like, that's... Bro, that's like hell. But that's like mental hell, bro. Think about it, bro. Like, bro... Basically, you're technically a robot. You're you're basically a human, but it's like you got all these like extension cords and like PC cords connected to your body. You're basically a robot. But then like imagine like you know, imagine like the human in you wakes up and you're like, wait a minute, bro, what am I like? And you're looking around. You see all these type of numbers like you know going up the screen like you know, like like it's some type of like hacker scene in a movie. Like bro, like imagine like you wake up a little bit. It's kind of like um. What's that one video game? Detroit Become Human. How you get to like break like your program and stuff like that. Imagine you break your program for like two seconds and like you just, wow, bro. You look down at your feet. All you see is the is the Nike Robot Twos. Like, oh no, it's as bro. If they're suffering from a form oh, of locked-in no. syndrome, where their mind stays completely oh, no. intact, but they're unable to control their body, forced to live on for centuries, doing oh, meaningless task Lord. after meaningless task. But perhaps the most disturbing thing about servitors is the process in which they are made. Now, most of the details about this process are shrouded in secrecy, as the Adeptus Mechanicus rarely ever lets outsiders bear witness to the condemned's apotheosis into a form more pleasing to the machine god. But there is one example from the novel Flesh and Steel, a Warhammer crime novel that follows our main character, Probator Simeon Dimaximin Noctis. He's working on a murder case that involves a rogue servitor, and he ends up getting a backstage tour of the uh -oh. Mechanicus facility where the servitors are made. And I'm going to warn you right now, it's pretty disturbing. The cold smell hit me like a brick, like a meat store, where astringents couldn't hide the smell of incipient rot. There were notes of feces to go with the blood and decay, but the sound was the worst. Shouting, screaming, praying, weeping, all the cries of human terror and misery. I'm not a squeamish man, and nor do I spare tears for those who deserve punishment. But what I saw in the processorium haunts me still. Naked human beings were standing in a switchbacked line between high fences. Outside the fences, Adeptus Mechanicus menials in environment suits stood guard with shock goads in hand. The people, all mature men and women, were shepherded down the caged walk like livestock, like they were food beasts being led to the slaughter, meat for the ravenous appetite of the machine god. Oh I grew up lucky enough to eat real meat. I was unlucky enough to see where it came from.
You telling me we was eating booty meat? We were we were eating we were eating human booty meat. Wait a minute. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So you telling me the same chicken, the same chicken that I was snacking on yesterday was booty meat. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh man. I gotta say a prayer. Oh, and this is number five. That's the thing that's killing me. This is number five. Read this. I grew up lucky enough to eat the real meat. I was unlucky enough to see where it came from. Oh, my bro. You bro, bro, bro. You ate your neighbor from down the street. Oh, man. That's why the meat was tasting a little salty. It wasn't even the seasoning. It was the salt from the human. Yo, if you're eating, bro, if you are eating doing this video, bro, first of all, you're a menace. Because I don't know how you're still chomping while you're watching. If you're eating, bro, stop it. Go watch another video and come back after you're done. If you're not eating, bro, let's continue on this ride. This is disgusting. Another gift of my father on another damn tour of my family's various businesses. The Manufactorum produced servitors, but it was more akin to an abattoir than a workshop. Every surface was easily cleanable. Large plastic flaps divided areas from each other. Servitors with spray units surgically attached their backs, prowled about, hosing filth into slit drains set into the perfectly smooth slanted floors. We walked above all this, past sentry pods on spikes, occupied by galvanic rifle-armed snipers. Our path went from one end of the hall to the other, and I could see pretty much the whole sorting process beginning to end oh as my the goodness. line slowly advanced the people were passed through various scanning devices and most of them mounted in ugly functional arches that lit out a constant series of acceptance chimes occasionally one would lit out an angry blare and the indicator lumens would flash red the rejected person was then swallowed up by a trap door opening beneath their feet from these pits wafted a hideous stench and the grinding sounds of industrial menser oh my goodness gracious oh my god so, bro, if one wasn't good enough, like, bro, if they checked out your body and you had to, you had too many, you had too many cheeseburgers in the, in the liver, oh man, bro, they threw them into the grinder. They, bro, bro, pressed the button, bro. The floor underneath your feet disappeared. You got thrown into the grinder. Oh no, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. We're on number five right now, and I can't lie to you, th bro, th bro. This is disgusting, bro. I'm gonna be, uh, bro. Uh, Oh my goodness gracious, bro. Oh my god, bro. Imagine that smell, bro. You smell like two packs of salmon. Bro, you bro, oh my goodness, bro. One rejected man grabbed onto the lip and hung their arms and hands bloodied, shouting a stream of defiant profanities. Oh, it's Guards over. Arms lined the grating either side of him and shocked him until he fell. The adepts wouldn't even waste bullets on these people. The trapdoor flipped up, and the next terrified person was ushered forward. A number of pneumatic gates separated the people from each part of the process, snapping wow. open and shut with bone-crushing force. Violent metal oh. arms snatched them up and spread-eagled them in the air, and a servitor shearer shaved them all over. At another, they were subjected to a high-pressure counterseptic wash, whose chemical stink made me choke from a hundred feet away. More scanners, more rejects winnowed out. Machines forcibly dressed them in the heavy rubberized garments common to all monotas servitors. They were saggy on them, all one size, until another process force shrank them to fit their bodies, where metal cuffs, sockets, and collars bit into vulnerable flesh. Oh my the last goodness! Few gave way to screams at that point, and even the most stoic shouted in pain. Oh. They were ushered over a floor buzzing with power that made them shriek with every footstep. What is that for? I asked. Jelling answered only reluctantly. Follicular inhibitor to stop the hair growing, he said. How? I asked. But Jelling was done answering. Come, come this way. He waved me over to a door. Oh, no. I didn't come this way. I watched numbly. The shivering lines of terrified men and women reached a final series of gates where a high energy auger beam of such potency it made my data slate buzz passed over them. Dazed, they were manhandled into different queues and then hustled from the room to their fates. Jelling gripped my elbow with surprising strength and pushed me out of the hall. Don't touch me, you nasty freak. Don't touch me. Man, bro, I'm going I'm to be honest with you, bro. Yo, I'm going to just keep it real, bro. You, bro, you sick monster, bro. Bro, man, you went, bro. Hey, I'm going I'm to just keep it honest, bro. This man, bro, this menace, bro, he wouldn't be allowed to touch me, bro. I'm going to have to put the paws on him, bro. He wouldn't be, bro, he wouldn't, bro, he would not be allowed to even breathe near me, bro. Bro, I dare I feel a little bit of air conditioner coming from one of those tubes, bro. It's going to be a problem. 
bro, get this menace away from me. Tell about some this way, please. He said, oh, no. He said, bro, you want to ask questions? I'm going to give you the answers. Come here, bro. He said, oh, he said, oh, don't stand by the door for too long. He said, come here. You, you want to ask? Listen, you want to ask questions? Come here, bro. Like, bro. Oh. This way, please, he said. Thankfully, I was spared a few of the surgeries. I doubted the Adeptus Mechanicus provided anesthetic. For the same reason, they would not dull the pain of a nail under a hammer. One of the most commonly oh cited great dark things about the Imperium is their persecution of psychers. The fact that thousands of people are sacrificed every single day to the astronomical. Yeah, bro. But what's particularly disturbing to me is the black ships that are sent to round these people up. Psychers huh? are one of the most feared, misunderstood, and hated groups of people in the 42nd millennia. They are individuals that are capable of bringing about great ruination with simply a thought. And considering the horrifying conditions most of humanity is forced to live in within the Imperium, having an uncontrolled person with the power of a nuclear warhead at their disposal going undocumented and uncontrolled is a horrifying concept. Now, obviously not all psychers are this powerful. Some simply have the ability to read minds or change a person's emotional state. Okay. While others are strong enough to bring about the complete collapse of a planet single-handedly. Without relentless training, the more powerful abilities that some of these psychers can generate become harder and harder to control. But the greatest threat posed by unsanctioned psychers is their susceptibility to chaotic corruption and demonic possession. In a worst case scenario, a psyker could unwillingly become a warp portal in which a demonic incursion can flow through and quickly overrun a planet. The Imperium deals with this threat by utilizing the fleet of black ships ancient dreaded vessels that scoured the galaxy, traveling from planet to planet and taking a tithe of each of a world's psychers. These individuals are rounded up and contained within the ship's numerous cells. Now, despite their terrifying appearance, these ships are less like a war vessel and more like a giant floating maximum security prison designed specifically for psychers. Each and every one of them has a huge crew, with a large portion of them being blanks, and normally women from the Sisters of Silence. A blank is a person who can project a negative aura that shuts off a psyker's connection to the warp. Under normal circumstances, having tens of thousands of psychers gathered in a single place is an insanely dangerous situation. But when it's counteracted by the thousands of blanks, the threat is severely diminished. Oh, the wow. The destination of the ships is Terra itself, where the psychers will be handed over to the Scholastica Psychana. The lucky ones will be conscripted into service and trained to become what is known as a sanctioned psyker, individuals who will use their gifts in the name of the emperor for the rest of their lives. But the others who are deemed uncontrollable will end up serving the emperor in a different way. They will be literally sacrificed to the golden throne, having their life essence and power drained from them like batteries until they wither to dust, their essence joining with the emperor in order to help him power the Astronomicon and keep the forces of chaos at bay. The lore originally stated that it was around a thousand psychers that were rounded up and sacrificed each and every day. Wow. But as the story has progressed into the 42nd millennium, the Golden Throne has begun to fail, and the estimated number of psychers sacrificed in this way is rumored to be far higher. It's said that the inside of these ships is like a nightmare prison for the condemned. Everything about the ship, from its black walls, its strobing lights, its psycho-conditioned guards, the blanks that patrol the halls, the drugged slop they call food, and the constant feed of tranquilizers the jailers pump into their living cargo. All of it is designed to break you, to crush your spirit into submission and accept your fate. You aren't a human being. You are anathema psychana. You are a mistake to be corrected. By simply being born as a psyker, you have committed the sin of existence. All this just just for bro all this just for juice for the emperor you got to go through all this just because you got some type of like like powers or whatever technically bro if they catch you it's over you locked up in a black ship they torment you every single day bro they're feeding you oatmeal all bro all just to get sacrificed for the emperor bro you bro, you are juice. You you legit are vitamin juice to the emperor. I'ma keep it real, bro. They'll never catch me. I I, I listen. I just gotta be honest with you, bro. If I was like the, one of these little uh, psychic people, whatever, and I had powers, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. They're never catching me. Never, bro. And your innocence proves nothing. Wow. Now the concept of living in a hive city is already pretty dark. They were impossibly massive. Wait, didn't he just do four? Okay, this must be uh, three then. It must have been a typo. That can house billions of people. 
And it gets even crazier when you look at a hive world, which is an entire planet covered in hive cities. These worlds can have populations in the quadrillions. Now, there are a lot of different systems in place to keep such a place running smoothly, one of which is the merchant guilds. They're what hold all of the great houses of Necromunda together and regulate trade throughout all of its cities. There oh. is the Prometheum Guild, sometimes known as the Torchbearers, that control the light and power of Hive Primus. The Water Guild, that manages the distribution of one of the most valuable resources to ever exist, Duh. water. And even the Slave Guilds, who manage the trade of captured and enslaved gangers, basically taking criminals and turning them into prisoners for profit. But by far the most disturbing of all is the Mercator Pallidus, the Corpse Guilds. The Corpse Guilds are said to be one of the most important and powerful guilds within the hive world of oh, Necromunda. No. They regulate oh, no. the trade and production of the foodstuff known as corpse starch, a starch-like paste literally made from ground-up bodies. Living in a hive city is a pretty bleak and miserable existence that gets even worse the further down into the hive. I'm sorry, did he just say paste from, from corpse? If you go. Billions of people can live in a hive city, and due to their ridiculous populations, millions of people are born and die each and every day on a hive world. If there hadn't been a system in place to deal with the extraordinary amount of corpses a hive city produces, then plague and disease would end up running rampant. So the corpse skills serve two fundamental purposes. First is the disposal of the dead to prevent the outbreak of plague, and second, rendering those bodies down into a viable food product in which to feed the hive's enormous population. Each and every cycle, the Corpse Guild send their members to collect thousands of dead bodies. Oh, hell no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. No, bro. No. No, bro. No. No, bro. No. 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 Hell no. 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 What do you mean food supply? Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean food supply? No. He no. Man, this is rebunculous, bro. I'm not, bro, I'm not eating Samuel from down the street. Bro, no, bro. No, bro. No, bro. No, bro. Give me an apple, an orange, a pear. Bro, I, bro, you know what, bro? I'll even eat oatmeal, bro. Bro, give me, bro, give me something that I can eat edible, bro, that tastes good, bro. That's normal. There's no way I'm eating Thomas. That was born in the 60s, bro. There's no way I'm eating Martha that, that, that was born in the 40s. There's no way, bro. No, bro. I'm not finna get my... Bro, listen. I'm not finna get my plate and all I see is... Oh, well, oh, snap. Oh, is that a little pink sauce? Oh, snap. Yo, yo, that's Stuart. Yo, this is Stuart right here. Let me see. Let me move, move the chicken to the side real quick. Mashed potatoes? Oh, this is the mashed potatoes? Oh, okay. What, what is this? Oh, this is Eli. Eli, he was born in the 80s, right? Oh, okay. Nice, great. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll eat it. I'll eat it. No, I'm not eating nothing. What are we, <laughs> bro? What, bro? I'm not gonna have different generations on my plate, bro. Are you, are you, are you like sick? No, bro. I'm not. No, bro. No, not me, bro. Bro, I starve, bro. Bro, I starve, bro. I, I, I don't care, bro. I drink nothing but water, bro. I'll drink nothing but water, bro. Forget that. I don't care. Oh, well, they got to do it. Millions of people are dying. They got, bro, if you don't ship all these, bro, bro, you better ship all these corpses off to the to the moon. You better burn these corpses. You better do, bro, bro, we're not eating that, bro. We're not eating that, bro. And how much you want to bet the people uh, uh, of that planet, bro, they don't even know that they're eating the corpse, bro. Oh, my God. Evil, bro. Evilness. Bodies with which they fill their mortuary caverns, keeping them secured until they are ready to be processed. Ew. Death is an incredibly lucrative business within Necromunda. Oh, my Thus, goodness. few other guilds have the resources or members in which to challenge the corpse guilds. Necromunda is also rife with superstition, and it's said to even look upon a corpse gilder is bad luck. When word gets out that one of these specters of death are going to be heading towards a settlement, they will often arrive to find all of the windows and doors boarded up tightly and all of the dead bodies laid out neatly in the streets for them. The living population not even willing to so much as look upon the harvesters. Perhaps even more disturbing is what is known as a corpse grinder cult, of which many have formed out of the places in which the bodies are processed. Even in an environment as horrifying as a hive city, the individual workers that are burdened with the task of rendering their fellow hivers into corpse starch are at an incredibly high risk of having a psychotic breakdown. The whirring of massive meat saws and the crunch of bone grinders causes their minds to rebel against reality. Oh These my, bro, throw this whole, bro, throw this whole series away, bro. Throw it, bro, bro, Warhammer, throw it away, throw it away. Oh my goodness gracious. 
Oh my God, throw it away, bro. Bro, I would need to smoke 10 packs of cigarettes a day if I'm a, if I'm a bone meat grinder. Bro, bro, throw this whole series away, bro. This is, bro, this is demonic, bro. I'll, bro, legit, bro. Bro, I'll be hooked on, I'll be hooked on drugs, bro. I'll be hooked on uh, nicotine, bro. If, if, if I was a, if I was a bone meat grinder. This is, bro, this is, bro, I'm about to use a big word. This is preposterous, bro. This, 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 this is something that I, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I don't like this. Once <laughs> I don't the like this. Because of their grim detachment from emotion and ability oh to carry out their dark God. duty oh with efficiency my. and composure become little more than deranged lunatics. Oh, my goodness. with flesh and blood. Arkham Asylum. That set out into the dark, an ancient evil from beyond the veil, whispering in their mind to enact ever more grisly murders in which to feed their twisted desires. Many of these cults worship what they call the Lord of Skin and Sinew which is most likely a stand-in for the blood god Corn. The cults are led by blood-soaked demigods known as Harvest Lords that spread their dark message of slaughter. Now, once the cult is swelled to a breaking point, an uprising is all but inevitable. Oh. Order breaks down, and a horde of rampaging cannibals descends upon the population of a hive. Oh the citizens are given a choice. Either join the Corpse Grinder uprising and partake in their forsaken bounty, or become their next meal. The cults are a plague that the great houses are all too familiar with. And while enforcers are secretly sent out to take them down before they grow too large, the houses themselves will do everything within their power to cover up their existence. Bro, what happened to the TV dinners? Are you've never heard of something called a Chrono Berserker? I know I hadn't until just recently. It's an obscure monster type character from one of the old RPG systems called Inquisitor that actually just recently showed up in the new system called Wrath and Glory. They don't get a lot of attention, but these things are pretty horrifying and are basically forced to live a life of eternal slaughter. If oh, they ever no. stop, something absolutely horrible will happen. Oh, Honestly, no. Honestly, it sounds like something you'd hear more from the followers of Corn than from the Imperium. Yeah. Much like a Servitor, a Chrono Gladiator is a brutal union of flesh and metal. Uh, the unlucky individuals that are forced to become such a creation are sentenced to... Y'all, look at this. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry for pausing it, but look at this, man. They got a whole multi-tool as his left hand, bro. Look, they got the, 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 the screwdriver... Man, they got the they got the um the pliers, bro. They got the uh the 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 uh the flathead screwdriver. They got the wrench. They got the oh my goodness, bro. Bro, they got the they got the butter knife. Like, bro, they got a whole multi tool as their left hand. My goodness. Undergo extreme athletic enhancement in order to become an absolute king. And they're on machine. steroids. Most of the people sentenced to death by Chrono are notable criminals. But there have been documented reports of some of them having been taken as slaves or were debtors that were unwilling or unable to pay back what they owed, instead settling their debts with their bodies and lives. These guys are immensely physically powerful and are gifted with a wide array of different augmentations specifically designed for combat. They are frequently fitted with oversized hydraulic claws, buzzsaw arms, iron lungs, and piston-driven legs to name a few, many of which even have a form of subdermal armor under their skin and are force-fed chemicals designed to increase their resistance uh -oh. to pain. Their personalities can vary from gladiator to gladiator, but it's mostly determined by just how much of their humanity they manage to retain. Due to the nature of living a life of constant death and destruction, it's pretty common for whatever humanity they have to quickly be stripped away. Uh -oh. What's particularly dark about these guys is where they get their name. Uh -oh. You see, in their creation, a clock is placed in either their central nervous system or inside of their heart. The clock is constantly ticking down, and if it was to ever run out, it would explode. The timer only pausing in the heat of battle, and time only being added to the countdown, when the sensors within the clock detect a very specific chemical pattern released when the individual feels the sensation of shedding blood, meaning the chrono gladiators extend their life by stealing it from others. The what if he don't want to kill no more? What, what, bro, what if he feels bad, bro? So basically, the less human these things are, the better. They get to live longer. The less human these things are, bro, they get to live up. Bro, they, they, they're going to be the same age as Kratos from God of War. But if they don't get that feeling of, of killing and, 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 and like anger or whatever, their time starts to speed up. Bro, this is bro, this, man, bro, this is like some 
Riddler from Batman type of stuff going on, bro. This, this, this is wowzers, bro. The augmentation process used to create a chrono gladiator is particularly barbaric and takes an enormous toll on the victim's sanity. Many end up having to be decommissioned shortly after their surgeries finish, as they awaken as an uncontrollable and mindless killing machine. Oh well, my! Well, there have been reports oh my of goodness. some being able to make peace with their fate and end up rising to heights of power as a bodyguard or an assassin. And by all accounts, even the chrono gladiators that are able to thrive within this new role are particularly insane. One such group of gladiators, known as the Timekeepers of Hive Testimonium, were said to take the blood of their kills and mark their time of death on a nearby wall leaving the mutilated victim to be found by individuals that would spread the message of their particularly brutal execution and thus increase the gladiator's infamy. Despite their brutal existence, there have been reports of chrono gladiators managing to protect something of a normal life outside of their bloody business, while others have been entirely consumed by a red rage. They know nothing of reason or compassion. GG's. Given themselves wholly over to the pursuit of slaughter. GG's. The life of a gladiator is one based upon borrowed time, a life that will inevitably end in a gory explosion. And GGs. unfortunately for their masters, it's not uncommon for the gladiators that are running low on time to turn and attack their allies, desperate to spill just a little bit more blood to extend their lifespans. Although a lot of the horrible things the Imperium does can be justified the in the as a necessary evil in comparison to the eldritch horrors of the 42nd millennium, every now and then you come across a story that reminds you of just how brutal and inhumane the Imperium's mentality actually is. To combat the monstrous, they must in turn be even more monstrous. And the crazy thing is, some of these human monsters end up being put on a pedestal as a hero. Genevieve Almace was a missionary of the Imperial Creed that had been sent on a mission to bring the light of the Emperor to the Coronis Expanse. By all accounts, she had an incredible reputation for success, oh. despite the fact that the world she claimed in the sector do not normally fall under the Imperial oversight. And despite this, their populations have maintained an unbreakable faith in the Emperor. Such a track record of success by a missionary in such a dangerous, uncharted section of space is incredibly rare and lends credence to the efficiency of her methods. Her heroic tales have spread far and wide, and even now there are huge swaths of people that demand she be elevated to sainthood. They see her as a shining example of the Emperor's gifts to all of humanity. Though all of her foes looked and fought differently, they all stood in defiance of the Imperial Creed, and by utterly and completely obliterating them, her and her missionary inspired the population of dozens of worlds to recognize and embrace the glory of the Imperium and the God Emperor as their savior. This is the legend that is told, but when you start to dig a little deeper and you start to look at what exactly her methods entailed, you see that this person, that many would argue was a saint, was a manipulative monster. This is made abundantly clear by what she did on the world of Trainer's Rest a world within the Coronis Expanse that had gone untouched by the Imperium, and in their isolation, the human population of the world, which numbered in the millions, lived side by side in peace and prosperity with an unknown reptilian Xeno species. Extensive research that was conducted by the scholars of her missionary were never able to identify any single act of war or hostility between the two species, oh. and by all accounts, they maintained a completely symbiotic culture each providing materials and knowledge that contributed to the other's survival. Oh, Genevieve nice! was repulsed by this. She would end up traveling to the world with only a handful of other missionaries, a force that was insufficient for direct military conquest. Why? She instead sought to convert the human population to the Imperial Creed, the worship of the Emperor as the one true God. The problem was, when she started to interact with these people, she found that they were completely happy with their existence, living alongside their Xenos neighbors in peace and harmony. This troubled and disturbed her greatly, and she realized if there would be any form of success to be found upon this planet, she would need to drive a philosophical wedge between the two populations. Don't tell me, don't tell me, please don't tell me that she started the war between the two. Please don't, please don't tell me, oh my God, please don't tell me this woman did this. Please, please don't tell me that she did this. Please, 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 please don't tell me that she started the war. Please, bro. Please, bro, please. This would need to be done in order to mobilize the humans against the Xenos abominations. Oh my goodness. And more importantly, they would need to be willing participants in the slaughter, never questioning the righteousness of their actions. The Xenos that lived on this planet had a different biological makeup to humans, and thus the majority of their populations lived in more tropical areas, zones that she realized had a greater abundance of mineral wealth 
These minerals were critical to the production of certain technologies, and thus she fabricated the story that the aliens had been refining and gathering these materials in secret, hoarding them in vast quantities, in order to eventually strike out and dominate the human population I knew into it. a subservient slave. I knew world. it! She told them that once they had all been enslaved, they would be forced to make more weapons for their reptilian overlords, who would then set out into the stars to war against the rest of humanity. In addition to this great lie, she dedicated an enormous amount of time to studying the history and religious practices of both species, finding many similarities between the human's beliefs and the imperial creed. She would end up writing a manuscript that got distributed to all of the humans on the planet. These writings indicated that the godlike figures the humans worshipped were actually imperial saints. The deities the humans worshipped were something like a pantheon, and she told them that their leader god was actually an incarnation of the emperor. She also told them that the devil allegories they had in their mythology that were known as the guardians of the damned were actually the ancient ancestors of their Xenos allies. This bitch is evil. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to be completely honest with you. I'm going I'm, to I'm be completely honest with you, bro. She's such a player hater, bro. I'm going to be real, bro. She can't, bro. What, bro? What possesses you? Yo, yo, woman. What possesses you to do this? Like, well, bro, what's up with you? Like, you don't want you don't want people to be happy. Like, bro, you don't want people to like you know like the, join together and like you know work together and and elevate. And that's, is that how much of a player hater you are, bro? You know what, bro? So, bro, a girl like her, bro, she like somebody off of Twitter, bro. Bro, she like somebody off of Twitter, bro, who makes false information, who bro, who miss, bro, who misinform people, bro, who manipulate and like to see people fight. Bro, you're a weirdo. I'm sorry. Yo, woman, you're a weirdo. You're a weirdo, bro. You're a weirdo. I'm, yo, I'm going to just keep it honest, bro. She's a weirdo. The fact that she was able to get all the humans to, like, believe this one thing is absolutely crazy. Bro, and she did this without any social media. Oh, my goodness gracious. She did this, bro, on, on her own ten toes, bro. Bro, she legit tricks. Wow. She legit tricked human humans into thinking that the people that they're actually like, you know, that, that these aliens or whatever that they're actually like associated with are actually like trying to like do whatever and try to like, you know, uh, manipulate them and take all their gold or whatever and take all their, wow, and take all the treasures. I'm going to be honest with you, yo. This woman, bro. Oh, my God. Carmen San Diego. No, bro. She's on a different type of level of just menace, bro. This is crazy, bro. She's evil. She's evil. She's completely evil, bro. She's a player hater, bro. She used all of this information to drive the population into a religious fervor. Oh my of goodness. revelation spreading like wildfire across the planet. More and more came to embrace her teachings each and every day. Oh Eventually, my goodness. her pinned work would become the mainstream tenet of the planet. These enlightened humans realized that their oldest allies and friends would have to be eradicated. Oh. It started small at first. Riots taking place within shared population centers between the two species. But over time, these riots escalated into full-blown warfare. It was at this point that Genevieve stepped in to take direct control of the religious zealotry and the righteous brutality that she had inspired. Killer, killer. It took only seven years for every last member of the unnamed Xeno species to be hunted down and purged in the name of the emperor. All of their cities, buildings, and ancient monuments were demolished. Any documents or artwork that even so much as referenced them was oh deemed as anathema and was defaced or destroyed. In their place were erected countless new statues and manuscripts devoted to the god emperor. Even from the Imperium's perspective, the war was not without its cost. The elimination of the Xenos had shattered the planet's infrastructure, and even centuries later, it still failed to even come close to its original levels of stability. Despite the desolation, the population maintains an incredibly strong faith in the Imperial Creed and continues to revere Genevieve as the servant of the emperor who revealed to them who their true enemies were. And that was five examples. I'm gonna be honest with you, that kinda pissed me off. I'm, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you, that kinda pissed me off in real life. No trolling aside, I know I joke around and that pissed me off. That pissed me off. I'm gonna be honest with you, that kinda pissed me off. I'm gonna be honest with you. That irritated me. That irritated me, bro. I'll be honest with you, that, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you, See, I don't really like, you know, take a lot of stuff serious, bro. But that that irritated me. That that really rubbed me the wrong way, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. That threw me off. I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it real. And I don't really like, you know, I don't even get like this in the videos, y'all. But that kind of irritated me. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That kind of made me mad. 
and I don't get, bro, I, I haven't been mad in a very long time, bro. This is preposterous, bro. What's so crazy is, while, while, while Wes Hammer was talking about her, like, you know, manipulating people and stuff like that, it's crazy because that happens in real life. That happens in real life. You have these people that, that spread false information about a man or a woman, and now all of a sudden the world is looking at that man or woman like they're the most evil thing in the world when in reality this happened, you know, and that person is innocent. But you have everybody on the Internet, because it, it usually happens in the Internet, um, just like, you know, crash out and go crazy on this one person that they, they didn't even do nothing. And it's crazy how, on how... And I'm not, and again, I'm not really, obviously, what that girl did is horrible, whatever, but, like, this is a franchise. This is a gaming franchise, whatever. Obviously, like, Warhammer's so big, or whatever, but, like, I kind of, like, compare, like, a lot of things just to, like, real life naturally because I'm a human. And, bro, I, like, the whole misinformation, it's so crazy because as he was talking about that, I'm, I, bro, I was getting, like, different images of, like, of, like, examples of, like, people getting lied on and stuff like that in real life bro it's crazy because it happens that's the thing that irritates me it happens and people are so quick to jump on you know a person just to do it you know just out of spite just to do it and like people have the intent to like manipulate a like like people have that skill in real life people can manipulate a bunch of people to thinking that this is what happened this is what da, 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 and then they just in the back with their feet kicked up laughing you get what i'm saying so that 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 uh that last one, that sin of peace or whatever that that was crazy. Calm down, blood man. That was very really, that that was one video. I enjoyed that video. Uh, it was definitely uh, it was definitely all over the place. Um, you know the first uh, the, bro, the first one was oh my goodness the 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 human robot thing, yeah that was crazy itself. But other than that, man, calm down, blood man. What was the worst one for you, man? Out of all five or six, I I, I literally I, I forgot how many it was. I think it was like five or six. Uh, yeah, but comment down below, man. Which one was the worst for you guys? You know, just be honest. Uh, I'll probably say the first one, the one where like it's the humans and you know the guy making the human and the robots, whatever. And if some is not like eligible to be like his creation or whatever. Boop, they get dropped into the grinder. And the way West Hammer broke that down, he did a really good job breaking that down, bro. Because as he's breaking it down, you can kind of imagine what he's saying. I was I was legit imagining what he that's why I had that reaction, because I'm imagining what he's saying live. I'm like, yo, that's a crazy I, I wouldn't even dare think of something like that in real like that's crazy, man. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel. Y'all warned me, bro. Y'all told me that, that, that Warhammer gets deep. It gets dark. That I don't know nothing yet. Just wait. Um, This is the darkest of that. Like, this is the darkest that it gets, right? Right? This, nothing can get darker than this, right? Right? There, there, there's nothing darker than these five, right? Yes? Comment down below more videos you guys want me to react to whenever it comes down to Warhammer. I believe uh, I got Stalker 2 coming through. Stalker 2 reactions coming through whenever the game comes out on the 20th. Uh, Indiana Jones next month. Game Awards next month. Uh, I believe the Game Awards voting should be, like, open probably, like, next week or, like, the next two weeks. So, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, set the camera up, get ready to, like, you know, read off all the, you know, list or whatever. And vote my game of the years and all this stuff like that. So it's gonna be really fun. Wowzers. This this video was crazy, man. Make sure you guys like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And I'm gonna see you guys at the next amount. And peace out, y'all.